So a research agenda for the European Doctoral Program in Direct Guidance and Counseling might help to stimulate collaboration between all groups making research in our field, and it might increase the quality of our research and the practical outputs and stimulate the work of PhD students. So uh, the European Doctor Program will allow to strengthen our collaboration between the teams doing research in the field of career guidance and counseling across Europe and to create a network for research and for our PhD students to, and to consider several disciplines and theoretical frameworks and to create a fruitful and stimulating environment for ourselves and for our students. So in order to give a first scientific direction to this network and co of colleagues and researchers, a research agenda might be helpful. So since uh, 25 years, several new theories in our field have emerged, such as uh, the social cognitive career theory, the contextual action theory in career counseling, the system theory framework of career development and counseling, the PIC model for career decision making, the cognitive information processing theory of career decision making, and the life design paradigm, of course. And concerning this theory, I just have to say that we will have a new handbook for this fall, which should be published uh, this November. So the development of this new theory is create a new create new opportunities to compare their practical and theoretical implications, to study their complementarity, similarity, or differences, to understand our practice, to design our interventions, or um, to make simply research according to different theoretical framework. Um, this research agenda is only a first proposal. It, has, it is based on my own experience and on my experience as an editor of uh, the International, International Journal of Education and Vocation Guidance. And this research and agenda is also partly in line with the research agenda of the Life Design International Group. So the first point of this research agenda would be to promote the use of a variety of methods. Um, and in a content analysis done by Stead and colleagues of 11 journals that published career, vocational, and work-related articles from 1990 to 2009, they observed that most of the articles present quantitative <coughs> studies. In <coughs> the past 20 years, the, propor par the proportion of qualitative and mixed method studies remained very low, and it almost and did almost not increase. You can see this on this graph. And um, this graph simply reports the frequencies of the type of articles. Um, to increase the use of a qualitative or mixed method, um, Stead and colleagues suggested to include in graduate level and doctoral programs such as this European, European program classes of both quantitative and qualitative <coughs> methods and to train students to refer to a variety of paradigms. So it's, the idea is to use several methods and to use several theories for our studies and to promote the use of both quantitative and qualitative methods by each university, each research group. So I would like to suggest that it would be very interesting to use more frequently mixed methods or narrative approaches considering that <coughs> considering the importance of constructivist and narrative theories and approaches today. So case studies could also be promoted in our field. Um, <coughs> and according to Stiles' assimilation model, case studies can be accumulated and promote the development of our theories. And he, he calls this theory building case study research. And this is in line with the idea of the life, life design paradigm that proposed to go from practice to theory and to theory to practice. It would also be very interesting to use methods used in psychotherapy research, such as the systematic pragmatic case study approach. So several journals publish case studies, such, uh, such as the Career Development Quarterly or the International Journal of Education and Vocational Guidance, 
but in fact we receive only very few submissions uh, using this method. Um, many more longitudinal studies could also be conducted in order to describe more accurately career paths, career transitions, and causality. This study should not only take into account career-related aspects, but also aspects to other life uh, spheres such as family life or leisure time. Longitudinal studies might also uh, allow to develop more complex models to promote an holistic perspective of career paths. An holistic perspective is very important if you want to understand people really reality as suggested by several theories. Um, second, we would like to suggest to study more systematically the effectiveness of our career <coughs> intervention. On this graph, you can see the result of a study we conducted, conducted in London that indicates that career decision making difficulties decrease during the intervention for both young and older counselees. And this effect lasted over 12 months following the intervention. Moreover, we observed a delayed effect uh, for the young group. So we know also from Brown and colleagues that the, the effectiveness varies according to the presence or absence of some specific ingredients and according to the number of sessions. And these critical ingredients are to help clients to develop written goals, individual, individualized feedbacks, provide opportunities to search, gather and process occupational information during and outside the session, to show models of who have success co um, coping with similar difficulties, and to provide opportunities to consider the support available for different options. And we, of, co of course, have also the results of several, several meta-analysis in the field that really show that uh, this type of intervention are very, very effective. You can just think about the, the one published by Wiston in 1998. Uh, However, intervention evaluation research in our field should more systematically include control groups, consider process, underlying this effectiveness by studying mediator, mediators or moderators, such as the working alliance or many others. And we should also study the interaction between the type of intervention and the type of counselee. And this is almost never done, but would be very important to do. Increasing our knowledge in this regard would help us to design more appropriate career interventions. Third, we would like to encourage researchers to study career guidance and counseling with vulnerable or underserved <coughs> counselees. The contemporary world is characterized by globalization, by rapid social and techno technological changing, changes and uncertainty. The reality implies that people have to be flexible, to be able to always adapt to new circumstances, People with few resources have more difficulties to cope with this new reality and can be considered as vulnerable people. So for example, migrants, people who did not finish school, who did not complete a professional training, or with a disability, are certainly potential vulnerable and at-risk people in the job market. As reported by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, people suffering from mental disorder are especially vulnerable in the job market in Switzerland. You can see here that people with severe mental disorder are less satisfied at work, face higher job insecurity, have more difficulties to find a job, are more frequently not well treated, and are more stressed at work. Concerning job satisfaction, if 70% of the people with no mental disorder say that they are satisfied, only 30% of, of the people with a severe mental disorder are satisfied. Um, the average rate of people not in education, employment, or training in Europe has recently increased, as already mentioned by Jean-Pierre de Rosen. Latest estimates indicate that almost 7.5 million young people aged between 15 and 24 
can be identified as needs. That represents 12.9% of all individuals failing into this age group. The recent financial crisis and economic, economic recession may partly explain the increasing rate of needs. However, more research should be conducted in order to identify, identify social and personal factors that can be considered as vulnerabilities to become a need or to be marginalized. This should allow to better understand the origin of social inequalities. First, we would like to propose you to focus our attention on the resources of people, allowing them to overcome their own vulnerabilities or social barriers. According to our model, people work-related behaviors are a function of a constant, constant interaction between the, um, between the environment, environmental and personal predisposition mediated by a set of regulation processes. <coughs> and it is important to pay attention to these resources or to these regulation processes because our intervention may have an impact on not on people's disposition, not maybe or maybe sometimes on the environment of people, but we can certainly have an impact on these personal resources. And among these resources, we can find career adaptability, emotional, emotional regulation, self-efficacy beliefs, and some meta-capacities associated with self-construction and the identity development. We know that career guidance counseling can increase these resources, but we should do more research on how career guidance counseling increases these resources. Knowing better how to increase people resources, how to increase their resilience, would certainly contribute to the promotion of social social justice. Thank you very much.